gonna grow up fun toys for us kids. They got a million toys and toys for us that I can play with. I don't wanna grow up. I'm a toy just kid. We got the best for so much less. You really flip your lid. From bikes to trains to video games, it's the biggest toy store there is. She wins. I don't wanna grow up. Cause baby, if I did, I couldn't be a toys for us kid. Board game, board toy. Oh boy, I wanna be a toys for us kid. I don't wanna grow up to be a Toys R Us kid. Maybe I do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go dive deep into exactly how Toys R Us was founded, uh, what exactly happened to them, and really dive in deep uh, into some things that I didn't know about, but I think are important to uh, kind of present to you. Uh, as a case against Toys R Us. I like coloring. I'm a goddamn artist. I don't give a what nobody say. I go inside there and say, ma'am, where your coloring books and your colors at? Bitch, you can talk about she ain't got no colors. This is Toys R Us. That means you're supposed to have toys for me, bitch ass nigga. You ain't got no damn damn coloring book. You ain't got no damn coloring thing. You got stupid ass Mario, the Toys R Us, and stupid ass uh, Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. The damn toys dying at the end of the goddamn movie. Suck my balls, Toys R Us. The dumbass gear inside of there, they got Escalades. What the f you got Escalades for a four year old fuck? But let's start with where Toys R Us came from, how it started, and when it started. It was 1948, and Charles Lazarus had a hunch. Newly returned from World War II, he knew he wanted to go into business, and he knew long before the term baby boom. Everyone I talked to said they were going to go home, get married, have children, and live the American dream. Well, that's, that, that's been dead for a while. He also stated, uh, I decided that I would open a store in my father's bicycle repair shop, but instead of selling bikes, I would sell cribs, carriages, strollers, high chairs, everything for the baby. My instincts told me the timing was right. Those instincts didn't just help Lazarus capitalize on the baby boom. They helped originate Toys R Rus. Boy, you're such a silly man. The store dominated the entire toy industry. It really did. Uh, Toys R Us back in the 90s, especially me growing up uh, as a Toys R Us kid, essentially. Uh, yeah, Toys R Us was the go-to place for every kid in the 90s. But the store dominated children's imaginations. It dominated really everything when it came to toys uh, to the point where they just drove uh, any competition out of the market completely. Lazarus opened his first store, Children's Bargain Town in Washington, D.C. in 1948. In 1957, the company officially adopted the name Toys R Us. In 1966, Lazarus sold the company to Interstate Sales to help finance a larger expansion. According to Encyclopedia.com, Lazarus transitioned from chief executive to head the Toys R Us division, which was already soaring with profits of $12 million. Adjusted for inflation today, it would be $112 million. So that's just starting, okay? The Toys R Us hasn't even come close to its peak. It would take decades before that would happen. Specializing in baby goods, it only began selling toys once Lazarus realized customers didn't come back for more strollers, high chairs, and other baby kids, baby goods, uh, with their second child, and yeah, I mean that makes sense, right? Like basically, you know, kid grows up, parents if they're not gonna have another kid, or even if they do, they'll just reuse the stuff. I mean that's what my parents did. Why would they rebuy stuff again? He started selling a, a bunch of inexpensive toys, and they just proved extremely popular. So he just went along with it, and just continued to sell uh, more and more toys. A mom and pop stores just completely buckled, sadly, uh, because of Toys R Us, because think about it, your mom and pop shop, you're maybe open five days a week, you don't have all the newest toys because you really don't have like a, a direct connection to the top toy manufacturers. So the only thing that you can do is bring in toys that you can you know, get a deal on or whatever it might be. But Toys R Us was a large warehouse filled with toys wall to wall. I mean, yeah, yeah it makes sense why all the mom and pop stores were driven out of business. As television became more and more popular uh, in the 80s and 90s, it just, uh, Toys R Us was very, very smart in their marketing, their advertising, the jingle, Jeffrey the Giraffe, all of it. I don't want to grow up. 
We're at Toys R Us, kids. Where can I find Barbie? I'll show you where she is. If anything's on your mind. Just that Mrs. Klein. And if you're waiting too long, we'll open checkout number nine. Those dolls to train to video games. We'll help you find just what you like. Here's your bike. The price is so low. And people like Blake. It's the greatest toy store there is. More games, more toys. Oh, boy. So come and be a Toys R Us. Uh, it was all catered towards kids, and it was making Toys R Us a place that every kid had to be. A every kid had to have the big holiday Toys R Us book uh, to do their uh, holiday shopping, like or make their Christmas list for Santa, like I did. But I remember watching whether it was uh, Saturday morning cartoons on, I think it was the WB. But I watched like shows like Static Shock, Spider-Man, uh, X-Men. Uh, but I just vividly remember even like Our Real Monsters or any of the uh, Snick uh, like shows, uh, the lineup essentially. Snick. That's Snick. Snick is here. Snick's here. Snick's there. The big Snick couch has arrived at your house with four hand-picked Snick episodes where Nick Snicks friendship. So keep your butt on the big Snick couch and Snick. Snick. She Snicks. He Snicks. They Snick. We're gonna Snick. You're gonna Snick. It's time to Snick. Snick. I just remember lots and lots of Toys R Us uh, advertisements throughout the day and of course during that period of time which I believe was like a two hour block uh, but it was just meant to be a little bit more mature like shows for kids. TV also helped consolidate Toys R Us's brand. Store used its mascot, the lovable a giraffe named Jeffrey, uh, who was developed in 1969 and used in TV spots for the company beginning in 1973. Soon, he was a television commercial staple, even acquiring a wife. That's right, Jeffrey the giraffe got hitched to Gigi. Uh, and children, Junior and Baby G. Fireplaces glowing, bicycles growing, hearts overflowing with cheer. It's that wonderful season we all find so reason. Toys are a time of year. The world's biggest toy stores, toys are us. The biggest selection, toys are us. It's a toys are us time of year. In the early 1980s, the store's TV spots became even more iconic and with a catchy jingle that features a self-identified Toys R Us kid, just like all the rest of us 90s kids, maybe 80s kids, uh, who didn't want to grow up. Just like Peter Pan and Michael Jackson. In 1974, Interstate Sales filed for bankruptcy, and Lazarus handled the restructuring process. Lazarus sold off struggling pieces of the business to get the company back on track, and it worked. The company, which went public in 1978, helped turn a $500 million toy industry in 1950 into one worth $12 billion in 1990. It's just insane amount of money uh, just spent on toys for kids and lots and lots of plastic. I I'm just saying. At the height of its power, Toys R Us sold 18,000 different toys in 1,450 locations around the globe. In 1983, Toys R Us opened a clothing spin-off store called Kids R Us. It's a place that no kid wanted to go. Alright, no kid wanted to go clothes shopping. Alright, when you were in grade school especially, uh, whether it's kindergarten through uh, fifth grade or even middle school, nobody wanted to go to Kids R Us. The only reason, the only reason why I was okay going to Kids R Us is when the Tamagotchis were out. Well, if it isn't Tamagotchi, her new favorite pet. Yes! So what's that make me, fish sticks? Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 by all means, feed it. Play till your heart's content. Look, Goldie, I took good care of her, and she changed again. Change? How about changing some water here? Katie, bus is here! So Tamagotchi can pause. I can pause too. Will I see that again? Hatch a Tamagotchi, the one and only from Bandai, each sold separately. Uh, as a kid, you, you probably shouldn't have pets. My Tamagotchi died. A lot. In 1999, Babies R Us was purchased by Toys R Us. And at some point, Babies R Us started to appear in Toys R Us 
which I wasn't able to find an exact date when the first like Toys R Us, Babies R, Babies R Us uh, uh, combo store opened. Um, but I mean, it was kind of like towards the end of Toys R Us's life, honestly, where people just weren't going as much. And that's honestly why I believe is possibly a last ditch effort to try to save it, like just merge the stores into one and then you don't have to pay, you know, separate money uh, for uh, of the building for just Kids Are Us or Babies Are Us or whatever. But that's just a theory, a retail theory. In 1994, Lazarus stepped down as chief executive. This was after he saw the sales of Toys R Us stores steadily increase in large part due to the video game industry rising. According to the LA Times, in 1990, sales of Toys R Us jumped from 22.7% to $2.02 billion. Adjusted for inflation, it would be $4.7 billion freaking dollars. It's a lot of money. As Lazarus stepped down, profits continued to soar with Toys R Us peak revenue of $13.9 billion in 2011 or $18.8 billion adjusted for today. Everyone for decades was a Toys R Us kid, and marketing along with partnerships was a big part of that. I would like to add, Toys R Us was no longer the number one retailer as of 1999. Walmart actually had a 17.4% share in the toy business, while Toys R Us had only a 16.8% share. You know, it may not seem like a big difference, but when your store is essentially only for kids' clothes and toys... You're not going to really, you know, take that spot back or sell because Walmart essentially has everything and parents like to go to Walmart over Toys R Us because they're not buying action figures. Some are, you know, it's a cool if you're an adult and you like action figures. I do. Now that we've gotten like the history of Toys R Us, Kids R Us, Babies R Us, all out of the way, let's get into the marketing side of things, which I think is really vital and the reason why Toys R Us popped off and stayed relevant for so many decades let's uh, begin with uh, the toys r us toy run which was a partnership with nickelodeon he's super speedy he's super sonic he's super stuck with toys he's branded from super spring texas and he's the super winner of nickelodeon's super toy run sweepstakes who won 1000 super bucks from nickelodeon plus a five minute super fun super charged super Essentially, you would get a postcard from Toys R Us. Are you serious? You would get a postcard from Toys R Us. Uh, and they would have like a little ballot uh, cardboard type box at the registers. You drop in the postcard and you just hope you win. Uh, that's basically it. I never won. I draw multiple postcards, but I just... I wasn't a lucky kid, okay? I just was not a lucky kid. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm a survivor. And that's what matters most. But the Nickelodeon Super Toy Run sweepstakes held by Nickelodeon and Toys R Us in 1993, 1994, and 1995, and then taking a long break before the Great Big Toy Run in 2013. So if you're one of the lucky kids who just so happened to win uh, and go on the toy run, it would be like a five minute shopping spree where you would just run with uh, cart after cart after cart, uh, just filling it up with just massive amounts of toys, video games, just everything. It was broadcasted on NBC from December 20th to 1965 to July 14, 1967. Later seasons aired on Lifetime, blah, blah, blah. But the Nickelodeon partnership with Toys R Us was definitely not the only partnership that really provided Toys R Us with that huge market share in terms of toys. Another partnership they had was Nintendo itself. Hello! Toys R Us's partnership with Nintendo provided Toys R Us with consoles uh, like Game Boys, uh, Game Boy Colors specifically, Game Boy Advance, uh, Nintendo 64 exclusive uh, consoles to Toys R Us itself. And uh, there was like Pikachu edition, uh, there were different colors for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. Uh, I got the I, the 
Toys R Us only had the ice blue Game Boy Pocket, which was like the Game Boy Color Game Boy Pocket, uh, but they were the only ones that had it, and I remember it being like my favorite handheld console, essentially. I just loved the color of it, and I did like the, the Game Boy Color. Uh, the Game Boy Advance uh, came out in Pocket Edition too, which is pretty dope, but um, yeah, that's just a little history in my little Toys R Us runs. The other thing that... Uh, Nintendo and Toys R Us had and this really kind of pushed like the uh, Nintendo 64 which the Super Nintendo the NES were already popular But there were promotional videos available at Toys R Us uh, Essentially these promotional videos would provide the person who picked them up uh, the insight into a certain game. So, for example, uh, there was a VHS promotional tape available at Toys R Us that showed Majora's Mask. There was also one that just showed off the Nintendo 64 itself and Star Fox, and there was a bunch of them. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing was another one. And I, I just remember having and picking up a lot of these promotional videos because I couldn't afford the actual games. Eventually, I did. But... I just, yeah, remember it just gave me hype for the games, as I'm sure a lot of people who watch those promotional videos got hyped as well. It was before YouTube, before uh, really the internet itself, uh, in terms of like what it was capable of doing, playing videos and all that stuff. Toys R Us, the other thing uh, that they had that really made people want to go to the stores were their video game sections. And they went all out typically with their video game sections, uh, especially I remember Dreamcast specifically uh, and just having a bunch of Dreamcasts lined up, Sonic Adventure, Ready to Roll Boxing, just a bunch of different games. And it sold the it sold the console so well, and it's I'm sure it's similar to GameStop, Funko Land, EB Games, whatever you want to call it. It just helped the video game industry immensely in terms of selling games because Toys R Us was very good at marketing and it knew how to provide benefits for its partners. There was one promotional tie-in that I just might have forgotten about or just simply missed, but they did come out in 2006. Uh, basically, there was a, mar a partnership with NBC's Deal or No Deal. It's time to play Deal or No Deal. Mom, take the deal. That's right, take the deal. Deal, deal. No deal. It's Deal or No Deal at Toys R Us. Get your game piece in this weekend's paper. Prizes up to a million dollars. No deal. You win. <laughs> Toys R Us, the world's greatest toy store. And they gave away like 50,000 Wii consoles. Uh, and which is pretty dope the Wii was extremely hard to come by so if you were one of those lucky winners during that time I'm sure you were envy the envy of a lot of gamers so with the genius marketing Toys R Us uh, the um, Same amount of money that it was making and The fact that every kid in the 80s 90s wanted to be a Toys R Us kid You just wouldn't imagine that Toys R Us would go out of business i mean personally i just thought it was going to be there forever maybe maybe that's uh, like how boomers felt about certain stores or certain things uh, but toys r us was just one of those places that it was great to be a kid and go there in 2005 a conglomerate of private equity firms including bing capital Colberg Kravis Roberts and Vernado Realty Trust purchased Toys R Us for $6.6 .6 billion and then just took the company private. In 2009, Toys R Us purchased eToys.com. I remember eToys.com as a kid. It was one of the only places you can get like uh, Star Wars action figures, like every one of them, like back when like the prequels initially came out. Uh, but they also purchased Toys.com. I don't remember Toys.com. Maybe I do. To compete with the e-commerce boom, which those two websites are weren't aren't really, I imagine relevant. I, I I don't know. I just haven't used them in a long time. I maybe some people have, or maybe a lot of people have. In 2010, the company once again registered to go public, but due to sales slumps, withdrew in 2013. In 2015, Dave Brandon, former CEO of Domino's Pizza, which Domino's Pizza is very underrated, just gonna say. Uh, it took over the helm of Toys R Us, but he wasn't able to prevent the inevitable death of Toys R Us. In 2016, the holiday sales struggled, which contributed to Toys R Us officially filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in September of 2017. It's kind of sad to see because I, I literally live like a block away from a Toys R Us store. And I just remember as a kid, even to like my early 20s, like Toys R Us would get pretty popular and it just died like people just stopped going there because walmart uh, you go went to walmart you had target uh you had other stores and toys r us just was a one-stop shop for 
maybe kids clothes and action figures i mean it's just way there was way too many options for people to go to so yeah, i can see why toys r us wound up dying with its hopes for a financial savior ultimately dashed toys r us announced in march 2018 that it would liquidate and permanently close all of its 700 plus stores across the united states in august of 2022 toys r us announced it was making another comeback yay so but toys r us and macy's i guess are working together and there's going to be toys r us stores in macy's the last time i looked at was well, the last time it was updated was August of 2022. I don't know if Toys R Us is already in Macy's. I haven't been to a Macy's in a while. Um, I think it has because I, I, when I did my research, I didn't see it was canceled. From the catchy jingle, brilliant marketing to kids, an endless supply of toys, contests, and even the desi design itself, both in-store and outside the store, Toys R Us was where every kid wanted to be and every kid grew up. And that's that's the sad part of it. Uh, but I just I have very fond memories of Toys R Us. Uh, Pokemon the craze in the late 90s was absolute insanity. Uh, I just remember calling Toys R Us pretty much every day asking if they got Pokemon cards in. Uh, I mean, there was Pokemon tournaments always going on there. I, they did occasionally Magic the Gathering tournaments. Uh, Toys R Us was just a great place to hang out and be with your friends. And... It just people just stop going but i don't think there will ever be a time again in the history of america where you will see a big giant toy store like that not with uh, amazon not with walmart not with target it just it's just not gonna happen and if you didn't grow up in that time period you know it is what it is but if you did i i'm sure like you me you have very fond memories of hanging out in Toys R Us. But the biggest thing that I see and one of the glaring issues is I don't see a lot of people talking about Toys R Us and its biz business practices. I'll just, as well as some other things, lawsuits against them, which involve discrimination against its employees. So Toys R Us, while every kid wanted to be a Toys R Us kid, not every business partner wanted to work with Toys R Us, but if you didn't, it was like saying no to the mob. Are you in the mafia? Am I in the what? Whatever you want to call it, organized crime. That's total crap, who told you? And that is where I'm gonna end this video because in the next video, I'm going to go into all of that. I am going to go into the discrimination lawsuits as well as go into uh, Toys R Us's business practices, illegal business practices, and maybe uh, you might have those fond memories like I do, but might you might look at Toys R Us differently.